This week, we're going to be checking out the Alpha Wise U10 from Gearbest. Hey there, everybody. My name is Adrian. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I'd love to have you subscribe, so go hit that subscribe button. So I finally got my hands on the Alpha Wise U10 from Gearbest, and today we're going to find out how it performs. I'm going to be using it on an upcoming project, which I'm going to be announcing next week, so make sure you go hit that subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you guys don't miss it. So I started by taking everything out of the box. They had an included quick start guide, some extra PLA, a memory card reader and some extra tools, and extra screws. They even had this included print removal tool. It was nice and flexy, but I had to sharpen it with Dremel. Assembly was quick and easy. You just had to attach the two halves of the printer together using these T brackets. So I had some issues with the printer not turning on. Turns out it was actually just this switch on the side of the power supply that needed to be switched from 220 to 110. This varies depending on the country that you live in. So the files that came on the SD card that came with the printer were corrupted, so I couldn't print any of their test files. So I sliced up my own after I set up the printer in Kira and started up a print. So for my first print, I used the masking tape that came wrapped around the build plate in the hotbed, but it started losing its stickiness pretty quickly, so I just took it off and ended up using glue stick on the glass build plate. So here's the print you just saw going in that clip. I actually didn't let it finish because I realized it was gonna start sagging. I was doing it in base mode. Um, and I actually had the same problem when I printed it on my Annette A8. Um, I'm not sure if it's a problem with the model or with just my settings in Kira when I printed it on either printer. Um, but up to this point where I stopped it, uh, the print quality looked really good. And obviously, I mean, that's to be expected in base mode. I stopped this print and then I decided to go for something a little longer and I printed this uh, pencil and pen holder thing. Uh, it took about 20 hours to print and it printed really nicely actually. Um, way nicer than pretty much anything I've ever printed on the Annette. And um, the printer was reliable, it printed for 20 hours. Now I will say since this I have printed some other larger prints or say I've attempted to print some larger prints and um, I started getting some layer shifting so it turns out that's actually as a result of the jerk settings these are this is a pretty common issue on the reality CR 10 but as far as this print goes I really like it and for the types of things that I'm going to be making this this print quality is perfectly acceptable so some of the other issues that i had with this printer are stringing but i think that's probably more so as a result of the uh, part cooling fan not actually having a duct to blow the air onto the parts it just kind of uh, blows around in the general area of the hot end and like i mentioned in the clips earlier i also had issues with the sd card as well uh, the one that came with the printer uh, the files on it were corrupted. I couldn't open them in Kira. It wouldn't recognize the card and print from it, um, which isn't a big deal. That's to be expected from a cheap little SD card. So I ended up trying another SD card and it turns out that one didn't work either. This is also like a cheap Duracell SD card or something like that. Um, and then I got one of my nice SanDisk Extreme SD cards that I usually use for filming. And I put my Kira files on that and stuck it in the printer, recognized it, and I printed from it no problem. So um, that's just something to keep in mind. You may have trouble printing from cheaper and uh, lower quality SD cards. Also, the power switch on the side of the power supply, that's not a big deal. If you're over in Europe and you have 220 volt outlet power, you want to make sure that you've got it on the 220 switch when you plug in the printer and try to start it up. Otherwise, you will ruin your printer. Luckily, I live where my outlets are 110 because I live in America and I just had to switch it from 220 over to 110 and I didn't damage anything and the printer started right up. So that's just something to keep in mind. Now, I will give credit to the guide that came with the printer. 
it actually explained all that, but uh, I just skipped over it and didn't read it. And then I went back in it and found out later. So my final thoughts on this printer are a definite thumbs up. So if you guys wanna go check it out, I do have the link in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching this week's video. Make sure to subscribe because I wanna see you guys in the next one. So till then, go make something.